Deepers at Tiertroff's in the medial aspect. Uh, he's got a little bit of uh, ptosis on the left eyelid, and the concern I have with the little Botox up there always is the potential for uh, releasing that ptosis, but we're just going to put a little bit up there for him. Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to put, a, so what I do, this vibration is on bone. I like bone vibration and minimizes further discomfort. Usually I have an assistant with a second vibration that's proximal to where I inject. The way that I want to inject this is going parallel. So when I do fat graft, I go perpendicular and with, uh, with uh, fillers, I go parallel. So I'm going to go about two thirds down to this point to access this area. I'm going to try with an 18 gauge. I do a lot of crazy shaking to minimize discomfort. Hopefully it's not too bad. You okay? Mm -hmm. Good. I was checking in. Slow progress of injection. This is a um, 25 gauge uh, TSK classic cannula. Um, I use uh, either the soft fill 25 gauge or the TSK classic. Um, I, I don't prefer in my hands the Steriglide. I find it to be too sharp and it almost serves as, as a needle. Um, I like 25 gauge because I feel it's the uh, safest size with the least discomfort. I have migrated from the soft fill over to the TSK Classic because the uh, bore of the cannula is less and I find that the patient has a little less discomfort. So my tip is right here. I'm not really I'm just migrating, dancing back and forth a little bit, but you can, all, you can see how much of an impact it already has. Um, patient's always sitting. You're doing okay, big guy? Mm -hmm. uh, not like good? <laughs> no, okay. Big. All right. Uh, so we're just filling this up, and you can start seeing the changes here. I think this is pretty straightforward. We're going to access it. Um, we're just take a look. So there's, so there's still some hollowness below the orbital rim. I think this is a critical element is, is looking below where you're filling because there's a dip below the orbital rim. Thank you. Um, so what we're going to do is put a little bit more just below that, so it's actually below the orbital rim. I'm not a big fan of anterior cheek fills. If you heard some of my lectures, I, I think this can get a little cheeky, um, especially for a gentleman. I don't think it's really good. So I'm just buttressing the area below the orbital rim to get a better result here. Now, this area here, you can see there's a little dip horizontally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go lateral, eyes closed for me. So I always have the patients with their eyes closed. I usually use a 22 gauge for entry. Unfortunately, uh, I'm dealing with an 18, but being gentle just to use the tip. Eyes open, look straight ahead. And so look up, you can see it exaggerates too much. Look down, can't see anything, look straight ahead, and that's about perfect. So I have the patient always sitting looking forward. So this little horizontal component, I don't always come in here and access this, but when I see there's a little dip in the medial aspect, or sorry, middle aspect of the lower eyelid, I'll go ahead and do that. So just gently filling this area. You're not feeling much, are you? No, sir. So this is, it's uh, where the discomfort for the patient is, is twofold. One is entry, so it's better, in my opinion, to use a larger gauge needle um, so they don't feel it, because if you're banging around the dermis is where the discomfort level is. Uh, so I really strongly believe in using at least a 22 gauge. Um, and, but the trick is if, if you make the little sight and you're finding, I can't really get in there, stop and re-make uh, the hole because it's, you're digging around to get into the hole where the discomfort is. You doing okay, Barry? Yeah. Okay, good. Let me know if you're not doing well. You're so, using Restylane. Yes, I'm sorry. This is Restylane. I um, pretty much, 90% of my profile is Restylane, um, a Restylane lift. Um, I use Juvederm for the uh, lips. Uh, sometimes I'll use Restylane for that as well. Um, so here, for the lateral portion, I go one of two ways. I either am going to come uh, horizontal here or just go backwards. Now, because I'm going to miss this little area, I'm going to actually make another entry and go in. I don't always do that. Sometimes I just go backwards. But because there is this little lateral dip that, that extends medially, I'm just going to go there. And you see that I pinch and shake so that there's less discomfort. Yeah, everyone knows the gate theory of pain, so I don't need to get into that. But I'm very, very focused on comfort. You okay? Yes, sir. Again, I'm sorry. We usually have a second vibration device, but Billy is a trooper here by only getting one vibration. Um, the, how I got this idea of the bone vibration technique is that uh, I was injecting one of my staff, and they said, well, I feel less discomfort when it's on bone. So this <laughs> secondaries one is really good. This is like a $5 thing you get on Amazon. It's, I think it's called like, I'll, I'll take off the sleeve of the, of the glove and, and tell you the brand, but it's like, I think it's something like, Mighty penguin or something. I don't know what the heck. There are no penguins on there. 
but I like it because you can set the vibration speed. It gives the patient a little bit of control. By the way, you still see a little dip there. Close eyes for a second. And so, uh, eyes open, look straight ahead. So, uh, it's, I've tried so many different types of vibration devices. Yes, there's probably a joke in there that we don't need to go to. But, uh, that, but this particular vibration device is inexpensive, it's easy, um, very comfortable for the patient. It gives the patient a little bit of control with everything. I think that makes them feel better um, with what's going on. So we've used almost a full CC. I think you can see the improvement. Um, actually, I, I'm looking back in the shadow plan, it's a little bit more medial. So I'm not quite happy with that. What plane are you in? I am in just subcutaneous plane. There's a lot of different arguments about this. I know that some people have argued that if you go uh, subcutaneous, there's a higher Tyndall effect. I've heard uh, other people say if you go submuscular that you get problems with clumping down the line. I don't think there's an easy answer, but I just try to go to um, the closest point that I can. So I'm not really hugging, you know, dermis, but I'm just sort of in the subcutaneous plane. Um, I'm really not submuscular and uh, just filling the areas that I see. And, you know, I, my assistants have been trained to look for deficits that I miss on this side because you see I was just about to go to the other side and I realized, oh, I just missed the medial aspect. So I just went back over here and you're doing okay, right? Mm -hmm. Good. If you're not, let me know, big guy, okay? So I'm just filling this little medial area that's just not um, quite perfect, but you can start to see that one side compared to the other side is a dramatically improved you want me to do the other side or just leave it? <laughs> no, you want to. Okay. All right. You got jokes. Marcy, well, yeah, I know. It's on your expense. That's the problem. Uh, but you can start to see that there is a nice improvement here. You know, if anything, I could argue there's a little bit um, right underneath where I've injected, uh, right above. So the one um, point of uh, commentary that I think is helpful is everyone injects the orbital rim. That's obvious but I think it's helpful to look above and below where you've injected as well to go above and below the orbital rim. And that can be very helpful. Where's the, oh, okay. Let's save this cap here, it's gonna help me. Thank you. The other thing, I think it's an obvious point that I, I, I have um, the needle, usually again, 22, 21 gauge needle um, on, actually I'm liking this 18, damn, I may just switch this out. Oh, just sorry, cursed on that. But I'm gonna um, go in here again, horizontal, I'm in about two thirds back, and I can really control this. Man, I'm gonna switch to an 18, sometimes on the fly, making some amendments to what I'm telling you. But, so again, a little wiggle attack, patients understand, they may be feeling like they're in California, a slight <laughs> earthquake to the face. Sorry, Mary Lynn. Oh yeah, she's in Nashville now. I forgot that. Okay, so you can start seeing it just fill up. Be really slow. I'm just, you can barely, if you see where my hand is, I'm barely moving product. It does, but you can see how fast it goes in. You don't need to squeeze with a lot of pressure. You doing okay, big guy? Mm -hmm. Okay. What is that? This is Um No financial affiliations with any of the companies. Uh, but I, I prefer Restylane around, especially periorbally. I find it to be, um, it is not gonna cause the hydrophilic uh, response that Juvederm does. But far beyond that, um, uh, I've, there's just a lot of things that I like about the Galderma product line. And again, no affiliations um, with any company, but I, I, I just like it. The, the trade-off is the product is firmer, especially Rest and Lift. And I, I tell my patients they're gonna feel more firmness. So I guess this is like watching paint dry because it's not that exciting what I'm doing. I'm just slowly putting it in. And I think that's a good lesson is just reassess. And if I'm not, if the patient, unlike Billy, would have a lot of other deficits that I see um, I, and they only have a budget of, let's say, a couple syringes, I'm going to have to really take a look at where I'm going with it because I don't want to, you know, waste it all in one area. But he's got relatively deep set tear troughs. He's a gentleman. He doesn't need necessarily his temples filled or his submalar area filled to look um, better or more rested. So my focus really is gonna be um, his, I need to get this area looking great. If I don't get this area looking great, I think any temple fills or other areas are not gonna be as important. At the same time, when I talk to patients and I start to fill their face, what I tell them is very similar to, re, um, to sort of remodeling a home. You, you, fill, you, fix one, you fix the kitchen and all of a sudden the bathroom looks horrible. <laughs> so we're fixing the kitchen here, but fortunately, Billy's bathroom is not so bad. 
In other words, other areas of his face are not so bad. So I'm uh, constantly reassessing. And your best point of reassessment, I haven't done this because I don't think it's as critical for him right now, is just go back in the frontal view and just look. You know, he's getting a little bit of edema, so you're starting to see the line come back. So you want, don't want to chase that edema. Um, but I'm just gently filling it. And I always caution patients about pre-existing asymmetry. And I've talked to Billy about that before we started. Um, I think it's important because every patient comes in, I say that I fix 80% of the asymmetry and the last 20% they think I actually created for them. And uh, so my number one thing, and patients come back complaining every single week despite that is, Doc, I think you made one side bigger than the other, and I always show them the befores, and they go, oh. So, and after we do this little fun Facebook video thing, I can also answer more discreet questions if you have them, whatever those may be. And again, usually I come back back this direction, but you know, I'm just on the fly looking at this, and Billy's got a very long longitudinal one, and I feel like I'm gonna feel this better from a horizontal perspective. Um, so I see there's a little deficit right there, so we're just gonna go back and nudge that. It should be a little bit more numb because the wrestling's there, I mean, so the lidocaine's there. You doing okay? Mm-hmm. I think Marcy's gonna be pretty happy. Hey, Marcy, how you doing? But I, yeah, I can definitely field more questions. I, I don't know, again, this is like watching paint dry. I know it's probably quite boring to see this, but I don't know if there's anything else that uh, intrigues you about what I'm doing. Um, but uh, looks a lot better. I'm gonna come back and actually just put a little bit at this linear deficit across here. We've already done a lot here. So most of this is probably edema, but we're just gonna go and touch it up just a little bit. Marilyn, could you do me a favor? I'm gonna um, actually use one more wrestling, okay? Sure. So I'm gonna do his brows. I think this is, have we done any brows today? Mm -mm. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna do something different. So I'm obsessed with brows. I think that brows deflate. I think there is sometimes dermatocolasis or brow ptosis, but the majority of aging is just the involution of the upper eyelid. So I'm very focused on how the brow looks. Um, and I believe that putting a little bit of volume in the brow goes a long way. You may have heard my lectures about asymmetric triangles. Have you, if you haven't, I'll give you a quick summary of that. And the concept behind that is there's a short limb of the triangle here, and there's a long limb coming down this way. And that long limb looks sagging as we get older, but I'm really focused on the inner brow fill. That area typically just makes the eye, lip, the eye look very youthful. Um, if the little 18 inch. So I'm gonna attack this inner part first. It's the A-frame. Close your eyes, Billy. Great. So what I'm gonna do is just come in here with this. Billy, there's maybe slight discomfort here. And the way to minimize discomfort here is to go in and then over, not just straight over. And a lot of wiggle. Oh my God, okay, that's a workout. Eyes open, look straight ahead. Uh, and very slow injection here, just to be safe. <coughs> I used very dilute product, placed very carefully. The other thing that's get helpful when you fill this area um, is sometimes it looks a little bunchy. So I warn the patient I may be doing a lot of massage. And also if they haven't had a full Botox, I have them lift their brows up. Go and lift your brows up. So you can start to see if there's areas that look sort of bulgy and you wanna um, blend while they're lifting their brows up and when their brows are down. And let's take a look here. Relax here, look straight at me. Great, and some of the problem, he's got a little of underlying uh, blepharotosis on the left side, so I already mentioned that. But it just looks softer. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, it's a very subtle, it, your brain will start to, one thing I encourage everyone is to constantly mentally think creatively and innovate. The more that you fill, the more that you see, the more that you, you change your perspective on what is attractive and youthful, and I'm constantly thinking differently. Look straight at me. So that fullness looks good to me. Now, he's lifting a little bit up here, too. So, you know, there's a little uh, pre-existing asymmetry that I can't tell you with certainty whether that's, um, whether that's so much better or is it just because of some pre-existing asymmetry. Um, when you do lateral brows, I would be very cautious to do a lot because so much weight in the outer brow can actually 
take that long limb of the triangle and make it look worse. So you gotta be very careful. Light, slight discomfort, my friend. You okay? Mm -hmm. There we go, you okay? Mm -hmm. Eyes open, look straight ahead for me, good. This side's a little deeper set. You wanna be careful. This area can collect with too much volume if you're too aggressive. So, you know, even there's a, a high temptation to really fill this in aggressively the first pass. Um, I try to be a little more conservative and not strike perfect symmetry since it's unattainable anyways. Uh, lift your brows up again, we'll do that little move. So you can start to see the, the product there. So I'm gonna go a little bit above it and down. So, you know, lifting up is a way to cheat a little bit. So also the massage, warn the patients what I'm gonna do so they don't freak out. Look straight here. Yeah, I think it looks better. Now, there's probably a little bit more I can find. I'm gonna put a drop more there. We don't need to get crazy. Do you use that for hollowing as well? For hollowness? Yeah. Yes, and then, in fact, that's really what I'm treating. I, I, I would argue that most of early aging is involutional rather than excessive. You know, I, I, if someone needs an upper eyelid and they're volume depleted, because um, my contention is volume depletion is a principal mechanism, is that generally speaking, unless they have a, like they're, if they're 60, 70 years old, uh, 60 to 70 years old, and they've got a tremendous degree of dermatoclasis, I could start with removing the skin. Um, but I usually like to see and, and do like a, a, vo a volume challenge, see how that does. And, and then I just like, sorry, big guy, you can feel a little discomfort, you okay? Mm -hmm. Just put, uh, I just like to put a little bit of, um, uh, then I can read how much skin to remove because most of it's gonna be corrected with volume. Look a little higher for me, a little less. That or about right there. Look straight at me, good. So I think this is enough. Again, laterally, I'm very conservative with total volumes. I don't, I used to be, you know, the, the book I wrote about fat grafting, which was four lifetimes ago, um, I talked a lot about lateral volume, volumization. So aesthetically, from a conceptual level, I now am very conservative laterally, and I'm much more aggressive medially. I think it, for those, that concept of that asymmetric triangle helps me see that better. Um, do you need another one? Nope, I'm gonna do the wrestling lift. Now, I'm just gonna do his folds, which are mind-numbingly, foolishly easy. I don't, it will only take me a minute, but since he's a good, a good sport here to come all the way, I'm gonna go fill him for him. So you have to bear with me, but you can ask, ask any questions uh, as we go along. There's a little bit of lateral canthal deficit here, so we're gonna come back and just put a drop. Close your eyes for me, big guy. So for the audience watching on Facebook, YouTube, whatever, he's doing quite well, but I usually have multiple levels of vibration beyond what I'm doing to further make this a more switch out. So maybe this is worth stating. When I, for me, the nasolabial groove is overrated for the most part, unless it's a gentleman where I think most, a lot of men look good with some uh, boniness. You know, I think it's really important when you're looking at gender and, and you know what, what makes someone look good, I rarely make a gentleman completely you know, volumized. Of course, it depends on uh, you know, orientation, if he's with a much young, younger partner, et cetera. Uh, those things are, you have to factor in as well. But you know, for most uh, heterosexual gentlemen that um, with a spouse who's relatively in the same age bracket, whatever you want to find that is, um, I typically leave a more sculpted appearance, in other words, more a bonier uh, appearance, because I think they look a little bit better with that. So um, the other thing I'm doing here is to, by the way, your lip is gonna start feeling a little numb, okay? That's mm -hmm. normal. Um, I'm putting the majority of it into the canine fossa. Uh, Val Lambros out of LA has done some really cool studies of looking at what defines aging, and it's really this, is this can canine. If you look, it really changes the aspect ratio of the entire fold. So I'm just gonna do a little bit more on the other side. I notice we'll you really improve the dramatic laces on those eyes with that procedure in the with, preceptal area. Yeah, you're, you're talking about the filler? Yeah. Yeah. And you didn't even treat that directly. Yeah, and I and the, I think a lesson to summarize some points is I'm doing something boring like the fold here um, is for the eyelid, don't hesitate to take another access point to the lower eyelid um, because. Thank you because you want to get the best angle. And it's so little morbidity to make another angle change 
that I encourage you, if you just need to enter it from a different angle, just enter it. It's not gonna cause more issues. So, you know, if I needed to get here or here, I'm just gonna get the access point that I need. It should cause minimal discomfort for the patient. So we're just gonna do this side. So that's one lesson. Second lesson is that I'm parallel injection into the lower eyelid. I think that's pretty easy to understand. I'm parallel injection to the upper eyelid, which is again, uh, a counter distinction to um, lipo filling, which is perpendicular, deeper, releasing the arcus marginalis, so completely different. Um, and uh, as a plug for uh, my friend Mike's, uh, Mike Nike's course out of St. Louis, uh, again, no financial affiliation with anything I'm talking about. Uh, my courses I run and the books I've written are all uh, go to charitable donations. I do not make any money on anything. We're almost done, okay? Just gonna bring it back in a second. Um, I teach how to do lipo filling, which is a totally different animal, um, using cadaver uh, tissue and um, using uh, Vaseline, and actually it's very, very similar, but it's, it's completely different from the way I'm injecting fillers. So that's all I think he needs, okay? I don't want to overfill him just for the sake of demonstration. Patients' priorities are number one. I show a patient at the end, I say, before I show you how you're gonna look, um, defocus your brain from seeing the bumps and the redness and just look at overall. And if they, if they I show them one second, and, and 50, I tell them 50% of my patients will not know, they cannot see the difference, even though it may be very obvious to, to you and me. And if they go, I take the mirror away. It means they can't see it. It's an instant wow or not. I say, don't look at it. The other trick I have, I take them into a darker room on the way out when my concert rooms that are off, turn the light off, I have them stand about, five feet away and they look and they go, oh, I can see it now. Because it defocuses their brain from seeing this stuff. So that's a cool trick, you know. Uh, so we're gonna do a little Botox for him. Uh, I'm gonna lean your back here. So uh, can we lean this, uh, can you help me bring this farther back? Uh, yeah, great. Where is the marking? I use a 4cc dilution of Botox. There's all different ways of doing it. I find it creates a much smoother outcome. Uh, uh, I so I just mark out for him, I'm gonna do a more conservative dose. My, my different doses are either like a, a half dose, which I, it's a 0 0.3 cc, so, that, so that's gonna be about seven and a half units. I'm gonna do about 15 in him, it's not a high dose. Uh, yeah, lift your brows up for me. Yeah. So I have him lift, I just sort of mark this out. He's uh, new to the world of Botox, so I don't wanna scare him too much, but I do warn my patients they could feel a little tight the first time I do it, so don't be alarmed too much. Um, relax. So let's modify some of these lines. So you'll have some lines left. I hate the Jack Nicholson, Spock, Peaky look. So I go pretty lateral, and, it, and I have my patients, I tell them, even if I've gone lateral and you see this weird little peak, do not let that go. Come to my office and let me fix it because I'm going to throw up in my mouth thinking about it. So just come, up, come in and let me fix it, okay? Is this injecting air? This oh. is called air tox. That is That's not as effective. Not that is not quite as effective. This one. Very light. The kill Daltons, I think, are one. <laughs> okay, sorry. None of them are really yeah. stupid, but there we go. Sure. So we're just putting this in, again, a little wiggle. I will tell you, yeah, this wiggle six, technique makes it painless. And the trick with it is don't stick yourself. You see, I'm, I'm, I'm actually pr protecting myself from getting stuck. And the trick with this is practice on a pillow with some saline. I, I, I had Botox once in my life, almost died, because my staff was trying to do this technique and they can't, don't worry if something drips, by the way. Uh, they, 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 when they shook their hand on one side, they stopped and violently shoved it in with the other hand because it's like patting your belly and rubbing your, you know, whatever, rubbing your belly and patting your head. You got to sort of coordinate both motions. Um, but I think this is very helpful to min mitigate discomfort for patients. Is this a, this is a point eight, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you have a? Is do you have another one that's a point um, six there or another point eight? Okay, or let's what do you see. have? We've got. Yep. This is point seven. Okay. We've got more. So again, I know this is like watching pain there dry. There's be, not much excitement for all of you who are probably pretty advanced at this. You can see what's there. I don't know what's been used much. I have fun. I like talking to patients when I do this. It's quite therapeutic. And I tell my patients the reason I like to inject doing this is that I like surgery as much as I like doing this. It's fun. You know, and if it's not fun, don't do this. I mean, 
Don't live miserably. Um, that's a seven, right? So let me just use let me use that up. Do we have another eight? Is that what's any? Uh, okay, that's fine. Oh, that's okay. That's perfect. That's, yeah, Actually, right leave. We'll, we'll don't throw this out. I'm going to use this again. Put a little corrugator. This is a seven. That's perfect. So have fun with what you do. Close your eyes. A little vibration here. Pinch. Stop. So you don't want to stick yourself. Otherwise, that will be not good. So I, I, I've been able to do this where I'm getting right through the dermis, where the discomfort is, without sticking myself. And then moving forward. And that's a nice little trick to mitigate pain. They really should barely feel anything. Brown for me. All right. And we got one more area. I'm going to use that little point one left. Big smile for me, relax. And you can go all the way under the eyelid if you like. Um, you don't have to, unless they've got a lot of grapeness there. So I'm just gonna go around the outer edge for him. I see all my patients for my Botox back at two weeks to check on it. And the reason is, I don't know if it looks good and they don't know if it looks good. And I tell them that they need to schedule the next three months so they don't, it's like, Hiring a personal trainer, you have to keep it going, especially that first year. Big smile, relax. And the other thing I tell them is you have an option either to love my work, let me fix it, and that's it. There is not an option to come back in three months and say it sucked because I have nothing to, I don't have any idea of how to fix it. So what I tell them, if they can't make it back for their follow-up and they're not satisfied or they're satisfied, I still need to see them the first time, have them take, use their iPhone, take photos of their um, face uh, in repose, smiling, frowning, and lifting the brows up, and then put as a favorite so they don't lose it, and then bring it in next time so I can see it and judge my work and make a decision of what I need to do to change things. So that ends the session for the video. And any questions?